Good morning and welcome to you all for this service of morning prayer on Wednesday the 8th of July. I think the sun is trying to peek through the clouds, so hopefully we might be in for a bit of a better day than the washout of yesterday. Can't be too bad, Jupiter is sitting on guard next to the pea plants out in the garden, so he's obviously um, thinks that it's okay to be out today. As long as he doesn't eat any of the peas, we'll be fine. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Song of God's glorious name. O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised. Out of the mouths of babes at the breast, you have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out. You have made them little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under their feet all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The appointed psalm for today is part of Psalm 119. Verses 105 to 128. O deal with your servant according to your faithful love. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and will fulfil it to keep your righteous judgments. I am troubled above measure. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept the free will offering of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My soul is ever in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your testimonies have I claimed as my heritage for ever, for they are the very joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfil your statutes, always, even to the end. I hate those who are double-minded, but your law do I love. You are my hiding place and my shield. My hope is in your word. Away from me, you wicked. I will keep the commandments of my God. Sustain me according to your promise that I may live. And let me not be disappointed in my hope. Hold me up and I shall be saved. And my de delight shall be ever in your statutes. You set at naught those who depart from your statutes. For their deceiving is in vain. You consider all the wicked as dross. Therefore I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you. And I am afraid of your judgments. I have done what is just and right. Or oh, give me not over to my oppressors. Stand surety for your servant's good. Let not the proud oppress me. My eyes fail with watching for your salvation. And for your righteous promise. O oh, deal with your servant according to your faithful love. And teach me your statutes. I am your servant, O oh, grant me understanding, that I may know your testimonies. 
It is time for you to act, O Lord, for they frustrate your law. Therefore, I love your commandments. Above gold, even much fine gold. Therefore, I direct my steps by all your precepts. And all false ways I utterly abhor. O deal with your servant according to your faithful love. O God, save us from ourselves, from double standards and divided hearts. And give us light and life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is a continuation of our reading from the book of Judges, chapter 15, verse 1, to chapter 16, verse 3. So I hope you're sitting comfortably, and I will begin. After a while, at the time of the wheat harvest, Samson went to visit his wife, bringing along a kid. He said, I want to go into my wife's room, but her, fa her father would not allow him to go in. Her father said, I was sure that you had rejected her, so I gave her to your companion. Is not her younger sister prettier than she? Why not take her instead? Samson said to them, This time, when I do mischief to the Philistines, I will be without blame. So Samson went and caught 300 foxes, and took some torches and turned the foxes tail to tail and put a torch between each pair of tails. When he had set fire to the torches, he let the foxes go in the standing grain of the Philistines and burned up the shocks and the standing grain as well as the vineyards and olive groves. Then the Philistines asked, Who has done this? And they said, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he has taken Samson's wife and given her to his companion. So the Philistines came up and burned her and her father. Samson said to them, If this is what you do, I swear I will not stop until I have taken revenge on you. He struck them down hip and thigh with great slaughter, and he went down and lived in the cleft of the rock of Etam. Then the Philistines came up and encamped in Judah, and made a raid on Lehi. The men of Judah said, Why have you come up against us? They said, We have come up to bind Samson to do to him as he did to us. And three thousand men of Judah went down to the cleft of the rock at Etam. And they said to Samson, Do you not know that the Philistines are rulers over us? What then have you done to us? He replied, As they did to me, so I have done to them. They said to him, We have come down to bind you, so that we may give you into the hands of the Philistines. Samson answered them, Swear to me, that you yourselves will not attack me. They said to him, No, we will only bind you and give you in, into their hands. We will not kill you. So they bound him with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines came shouting to meet him, and the Spirit of the Lord rushed on him, and the ropes that were on his arms became like flax that had caught fire, and his bonds melted off his hands. Then he found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached down and took it, and with it he killed a thousand men. And Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey, I have slain a thousand men. When he had finished speaking, he threw away the jawbone, and that place was known as Ramath Lehi. By then he was very thirsty, and he called on the Lord, saying, You have granted this great vict victory by the hand of your servant. Am I now to die of thirst? and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised. So God split open the hollow place that is at Lehi, and water came from it. When he drank, his spirit returned, and he revived. Therefore it was named En Hakori, which is at Lehi to this day. And he judged Israel in the days of the Philistines for twenty years. Once Samson went to Gaza, where he saw a prostitute and went into her. The Gazites were told, Samson has come here. So they encircled the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They kept quiet all night, thinking, Let us wait until the light of the morning, then we will kill him. But Samson lay only until midnight, and at midnight he rose up, took hold of the doors of the city gate and the two posts, pulled them up far and all, put them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that is in front of Hebron. 
Here ends our first reading. A song of the word of the Lord. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Our second reading is a continuation from St Luke's Gospel, chapter 18, verses 15 to 30. People were bringing even infants to him that he might touch them, and when the disciples saw it, they sternly ordered them not to do it. But Jesus called for them and said, Let the little children come to me and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, Whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. A certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honour your father and mother. He replied, I have kept all these things since my youth. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, There is still one thing lacking. Sell all that you own and distribute the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. But when he heard this, he became sad, for he was very rich. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard it said, Who then can be saved? He replied, What is impossible for mortals is possible for God. Then Peter said, Look, we have left our homes and followed you. And he said to them, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God, who will not get back very much more in this age and in the age to come, eternal life. Here ends our second reading. The Benedictus You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as he was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. So let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you've brought us safely to the beginning of this day. And we pray for this day, for all it will bring us, for the work we will do, the people we will meet with, online or in person, the rest and the relaxation that we may be able to enjoy. We pray for all that we do today, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would guide us, would give us your strength, and would show us the way forward. We bring to you, Lord, those things which cause us anxiety, for those things which we are fearful of. This time as we begin to ease the lockdown measures, as people begin to be out and about again, we pray for your safety, Lord, that you would protect us and keep us. From our prayer intention today, we pray for all those involved in funerals, that they would be strengthened to carry out their roles with compassion and empathy, recognising the pain and distress caused by the current restrictions on families, mourners and themselves. We pray for our local funeral directors. We pray for those who work in the local crematoria. We pray for clergy and officiants of the services. We pray that they would all have that compassion and empathy with those that they are dealing with in these difficult times and circumstances. We pray for those who mourn, for those who feel that pain of bereavement, for those who feel that they've not been able to give their loved ones the funeral that they would have wanted. Lord, help them to know that gift of eternal life, that our loved ones dwell with you in glory. And so as we pray for our local communities, so we pray for our key workers, for those who provide for our needs, those working in shops, businesses and manufacturing, we pray for those who are working from home and for all the work that they are doing. We pray for those whose businesses and places of work will be opening up this week and in the coming weeks. We pray for all the work that needs to go into making those places safe and secure. We pray for your guidance and we pray for those who continue to be furloughed for those who feel that frustration of not being able to go to work. And we pray also for those who've lost their employment. We pray for the schemes that are being put in place to get people back into work, that they may be successful and helpful to those who are struggling. We continue to pray for our schools, for those who've gone back to school this week, for those who teach and those who learn. We pray for those who have to get schools ready for September, when all our young people will be returning. We pray for our young people, for the sadness they felt at not being able to meet up with their friends and who miss the day-to-day -day routine of school. We pray especially for parents and carers who have had to take on the role of homeschooling with the challenges and the opportunities that that has brought. And so we also continue to pray for the National Health Service for the work that they have done in the fight against this pandemic, whether caring for the sick or working in medical research. We pray for our hospitals, the hospice, for care homes, for those who go out into the community, for our GP surgeries and pharmacies and for all those who provide any kind of medical care to others. And so we bring to you, Lord, those who are in need of your healing touch, those who suffer in body, mind or spirit, those who need to know your presence and your comfort today. 
amongst the many that we bring before you. We pray for Bridget, Charlie, Wendy, Lisa, Morris, Margaret, Joyce, Mary and Marion Walsh. Lord, be with them and those who care for them today. We pray also for those who have died, for those whose anniversaries occurred this time, and those who have died this past night. We pray for those who are with them, who watch over them, and who now care for them. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me for this service of morning prayer today, either live or a little bit later on as you've had opportunity to watch. It's been good as always to have your company with me. I hope that you have good days ahead and that uh, you will know that the Holy Spirit is with you in all that you do today. We have our service of evening prayer at five o'clock today as well. In the meantime, do stay safe, look after yourselves, keep well and you remain, as always, in my prayers.